The Jungle Book by Rudyard Kipling, Part 6. Hello, this is Richard, and I'm continuing with The Jungle Book and the chapter called Cars Hunting. Mowgli the Man Cub has been kidnapped by the Bandalog. The Bandalog are the monkey people. In Hindi, Bandar means monkey, and Log means people. The Bandalog do not follow the law of the jungle, and both Baloo the Bear and Bagheera the Black Panther consider them to be highly irresponsible, even though the monkeys like to claim, We are great, we are free, we are wonderful. And I'm delighted to dedicate this story to Micah, Shana and Ariella from New Jersey whose family supports Story Nori via PayPal. We pick up the story, just where the monkeys have hoisted Mowgli up by his arms and are swinging with him through the trees. For a time, Mowgli was afraid of being dropped. Then he grew angry, but knew better than to struggle. And then he began to think. The first thing was to send back word to Baloo and Bagheera, For at the pace the monkeys were going, he knew his friends would be left far behind. It was useless to look down, for he could only see the top sides of the branches. So he stared upward and saw, far away in the blue, Ran the kite, balancing and wheeling as he kept watch over the jungle, waiting for things to die. Ran saw that the monkeys were carrying something and dropped a few hundred yards to find out whether their load was good to eat. He whistled with surprise when he saw Mowgli being dragged up to a treetop and heard him give the kite call for We be of one blood, thou and I! (whistles) The waves of the branches closed over the boy, but Ran balanced away to the next tree in time to see the little face come up again. Mark my trail, Mowgli shouted. Tell Baloo of the CNE pack and Bagheera of the Council Rock. In whose name, brother? Ran had never seen Mowgli before, though of course he had heard of him. Mowgli the frog, man cub they call me. Mark my trail. The last words were shrieked as he was being swung through the air. But Ran nodded and rose up till he looked no bigger than a speck of dust. And there he hung, watching with his telescope eyes the swaying of the treetops as Mowgli's escort whirled along. Oh, they never go far, he said with a chuckle. They never do what they set out to do. Always pecking at new things are the Bandalog. This time, if I have any eyesight, they have pecked down trouble for themselves. For Baloo is no fledgling, and Bagheera can, as I know, kill more than goats. So he rocked on his wings, his feet gathered up under him, and waited. Meantime... Baloo and Bagheera were furious with rage and grief. Bagheera climbed as he had never climbed before, but the thin branches broke beneath his weight and he slipped down, his claws full of bark. Why didst thou not warn the man-cub? He roared to poor Baloo, who had set off at a clumsy trot in the hope of overtaking the monkeys. What was the use of half slaying him with blows if thou didst not warn him? Haste, oh, haste, we, we, we may catch them yet, Baloo panted. At that speed, it would not tire a wounded cow, teacher of the law, cub beater. A mile of that rolling to and fro would burst the open. Sit still and think. Make a plan. This is no time for chasing. They may drop him if we follow too close. 
A ruler! Oh, they may have dropped him already, being tired of carrying him. Who can trust the Bandalog? Put dead bats on my head. Give me black bones to eat. Roll me into the hives of the wild bees that I may be stung to death. And bury me with the hyena, for I am most miserable of bears. Oh, oh, Mowgli, Mowgli, why did I not warn thee against the monkey folk instead of breaking thy head? Now perhaps I may have knocked the day's lesson out of his mind, and he will be alone in the jungle without the master words. Baloo clasped his paws over his ears and rolled to and fro, moaning. At least he gave me all the words correctly a little time ago, said Bagheera impatiently. Baloo, thou hast neither memory nor respect. What would the jungle think if I, the Black Panther, curled myself up like Icky the Porcupine and howled? What do I care what the jungle thinks? He may be dead by now. Unless and until they drop him from the branches in sport, or kill him out of idleness, I have no fear for the man-cub. He is wise and well taught. And above all, he has the eyes that make the jungle people afraid. But, and it is a great evil, he is in the power of the Bandalog, and they... Because they live in trees, have no fear of any of our people. Bagheera licked one forepaw thoughtfully. Fool that I am! Oh, fat, brown, root-digging fool that I am! Said Baloo, uncoiling himself with a jerk. It is true what Hearty the wild elephant says. To each his own fear. And they, the Bandalog, fear Ka, the rock snake. He can climb as well as they can. He steals the young monkeys in the night. The whisper of his name makes their wicked tails cold. Let us go to Ka. What will he do for us? He is not of our tribe, being footless and with most evil eyes said Bagheera. He is very old and very cunning. Above all, he is always hungry, said Baloo hopefully. Promise him many goats. He sleeps for a full month after he is once eaten. He may be asleep now. And even were he awake, what if he would rather kill his own goats? Bagheera, who did not know much about Carr, was naturally suspicious. Then, in that case, thou and I together, old hunter, might make him see reason. Here Baloo rubbed his faded brown shoulder against the panther, and they went off to look for Carr the rock python. They found him stretched out on a warm ledge in the afternoon sun, admiring his beautiful new coat. For he had been in retirement for the last ten days, changing his skin. And now he was very splendid, darting his big blunt-nosed head along the ground and twisting the thirty feet of his body into fantastic knots and curves, and licking his lips as he thought of his dinner to come. He is not eaten, said Baloo with a grunt of relief, as soon as he saw the beautifully mottled brown and yellow jacket. Be careful, Bagheera. He is always a little blind after he has changed his skin, and very quick to strike. Carr was not a poison snake. In fact, he rather despised the poison snakes as cowards, but his strength lay in his hug, and when he had once lapped his huge coils round anybody, there was no more to be said. Good hunting, cried Baloo, sitting up on his haunches. 
Like all snakes of his breed, Carr was rather deaf and did not hear the call at first. Then he curled up, ready for any accident, his head lowered. Good hunting for us all, he answered. Ho oh, ho, Baloo, what dost thou do here? Good hunting, Bagheera. One of us at least needs food. Is there any news of game afoot? A doe now, or even a young buck? I am as empty as a dried well. We are hunting, said Baloo carelessly. He knew that you must not hurry, Carr. He is too big. Give me permission to come with you, said Carr. A blow more or less is nothing to thee, Bagheera or Baloo. But I, I have to wait and wait for days in a wood path and climb half a night on the mere chance of a young ape. Psst! The branches are not what they were when I was young. Rotten twigs and dry boughs are they all. Maybe thy great weight has something to do with the matter, said Baloo. I am a fair length, a fair length, said Carr with a little pride. But for all that, it is the fault of this new-grown timber. I came very near to falling on my last hunt, very near indeed, and the noise of my slipping, for my tail was not tight wrapped around the tree, waked the bandalog, and they called me most evil names. Footless yellow earthworm, said Bagheera under his whiskers, as though he were trying to remember something. Have they ever called me that? said Carr. Something of that kind it was, but they shouted to us last moon, but we never noticed them. They will say anything. Even that thou hast lost all thy teeth, and wilt not face any bigger than a kid, because they are indeed shameless, Bandalog, because thou art afraid of the he goat's horns. Bagheera went on sweetly. Now, a snake, especially a wary old python like Carr, very seldom shows that he is angry. But Baloo and Bagheera could see the big swallowing muscles on either side of Carr's throat ripple and bulge. The Pandalog have shifted their grounds, he said quietly. When I came up into the sun today, I heard them whooping among the treetops. It, uh, it, it is the Pandalog that we follow now, said Baloo, but the words stuck in his throat for that was the first time in his memory that one of the jungle people had owned to being interested in the doings of the monkeys. Beyond doubt, then, it is no small thing that takes two such hunters, leaders in their own jungle, I am certain, on the trail of the Bandalog. Carr replied courteously as he swelled with curiosity. Indeed, Baloo began. I am no more than the old and sometimes very foolish teacher of the law to the C and E wolf cubs, and Bagheera here is Bagheera, said the Black Panther, and his jaws shut with a snap, for he did not believe in being humble. The trouble is this, Carr. Those nut stealers and pickers of palm leaves have stolen away our man cub of whom thou hast perhaps heard. I heard some news from Icky. His quills make him presumptuous of a man-thing that has entered into a wolf pack. But I did not believe. Icky is full of stories half heard and very badly told. But it is true. He is such a man-cub as never was, said Baloo. The best and wisest and boldest of man cubs, my own pupil, who shall make the name of Baloo famous through all the jungles. And besides, I, we, love him, Carr. said Carr, weaving his head to and fro. I also 
slow have known what love is. There are tales I could tell that... That need a clear night when we're all properly fed to praise properly, said Bagheera quickly. Our man-cub is in the hands of the Bandalog now, and we know that of all the jungle people, they fear Ka alone. They fear me alone? They have good reason, said Ka. Chattering, foolish, vain, vain, foolish, and chattering are the monkeys. But a man thing in their hands is in no good luck. They grow tired of the nuts they pick and throw them down. They carry a branch half a day, meaning to do great things with it. And then they snap it in two. That man-thing is not to be envied. They called me also Yellow Fish, was it not? Worm, worm, earthworm, said Bagheera as well as other things which I cannot now say for shame. We must remind them to speak well of their master. Ah, we must help their wandering memories. Now, whither went they with the cub? The jungle alone knows. Toward the sunset, I believe, said Baloo. We had thought that thou wouldst know, Car. I. How? I take them when they come in my way. But I do not hunt the bandalog, or frogs, or green scum on a waterhole, for that matter. Up, up! Up, up! Hello, hello, hello! Look up! Baloo of the CNE Wolf Pack! And that was the sixth episode of The Jungle Book. Next time, I'll let you know who was calling Baloo.